Welcome to the set of videos on linear models and linearizing nonlinear models. Now these videos are introductory and therefore will only be relatively simple. This particular video looks at what do we mean by linearity and superposition and specifically we're going to look at the context of control engineering which is where the author is based. What you will find is that introductory courses on control usually assume linear models and therefore they assume that superposition applies. And what we're most interested in is the students understand what these words mean. What do we mean when we say linear model? What do we mean when we say superposition? And perhaps a sting in the tail, how does this differ from a linear equation. So there is a subtlety that students have got to get used to. A linear model and a linear equation are not the same thing and it's easy to get confused. So let's start by looking at straight line graphs which people normally consider as linear. So here I've given a typical example of a straight line graph y equals mx plus c. And so let's um, give a number of examples. Here we go, y equals x plus 1, y equals x plus 2, y equals minus 2x plus 1. And I've sketched all those diagrams for you. You can see they clearly give straight lines. And people usually call these linear equations. But as you will see, they do not represent linear systems, even though they're straight lines. So now let's look at a concept of functions. So I've given you a block diagram here to represent a function where you see we've got an input x and an output y. And people are used to writing things along the lines of y equals f of x. OK, and so that's what's represented um, by this relationship here. The key thing is y is a function of x, not something times x. OK. Now, students may also be used to the uh, terminology independent and dependent variable. So here, x, an independent variable, you can choose it however you like, but y, a dependent variable, because what you get depends upon uh, x. Now, let's go back and look at system terminology. Now, this diagram may look similar in that on the left-hand side here, you've got an input coming in, and on the right-hand side, you've got an output, and you've got a system in between, and A depends on alpha. And here I've uh, said, OK, let the input be beta, and we get B out. And then let the input be alpha plus beta, and we get C out. And here's a key question. What is the definition of a linear system? Well, here's the definition. A system is linear if capital A plus capital B oops, sorry, what's happened there? Capital A plus capital B equals capital C. So in other words, you calculate capital A by just putting in alpha, you capital, calculate capital B by just putting in beta, and you calculate capital C by putting in alpha plus beta, and you want A plus B equals C. If that is true, then your system is linear, superposition holds. If this is not true, your system is not linear and superposition does not hold. So what we'll do is we'll show you some examples um, of when this breaks down and then examples of when it doesn't break down. So first of all, a simple one, let's start with a quadratic. Now, quadratic, it should be relatively straightforward to, uh, to explain this. So here we go, I've got f of x equals x squared. So there's my function. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in 1 and I'm going to look at this calculation down here at the bottom, f of 1 plus 3, which you'll recognize is f of 4. And the key thing is f of 4 is not equal to f of 1 plus f of 3. So the, the inputs were 1 or 3 or 1 plus 3. And for a system to be linear, I need therefore f of 4 equal to f of 1 plus f of 3. But here you'll notice, here's f of 1, here's f of 3, and here is f of 4. But 
there is f of 1 plus f of 3. And clearly, they're not the same. Now, that doesn't surprise you. You didn't really expect a quadratic to be linear because it's a curve. OK? Um, but the point behind this example is to show that using strict mathematical definitions, it's easy to show that quadratic does not satisfy superposition and therefore it's not linear. What about a straight line? So again, let's look at the test. A straight line represents a linear system if f of a plus b equals f of a plus f of b. So there's our definition. So let's have a look. Take our straight line, y equals mx plus c, and then I can put in a, and I get ma plus c. I can put in b, and I get mb plus c. And I can put in a plus b, and I get m times a plus b plus c. Now clearly, you can see that f of a plus f of b gives me m times a plus b plus 2c. And therefore, these two results are not the same. They are different. And therefore, a general straight line of the form y equals mx plus c does not satisfy our test and therefore does not represent a linear system. And that's an important message uh, to recognize. That's clearly true when c okay, is not equal to 0. OK. So, students have got to be careful not to mix up the concepts of a linear system with a linear equation. For a linear system, superposition applies. That means if you calculate a response y1 to input u1, a response y2 to input u2, and then a response y1, 2 to an input u1 plus u2, you must have the relationship y of 1, 2 equals y1 plus y2. Now, this is a very powerful observation for solving and analysing system behaviours because if superposition applies, it means you can compartmentalise your responses, i.e. you can calculate a response to U1 and then separately a response to U2 and add them together. And sometimes it's much easier to calculate a response to a specific U1 and another response to U2 and add them than it is to calculate the response to U1 plus U2. OK, what about Laplace transforms? The key thing here is to show that where a system can be represented by a Laplace transform model, then linearity or superposition holds. Therefore, this is a linear system. So here's an example. You can see what I've done. I've put y1 equals g times u1, y2 equals g times u2, and therefore y12 is g times u1 plus u2, which clearly is the same as y1 plus y2. And you might think, well, that's rather a statement of the obvious. That's fine if you think so. The most important thing is that you recognize that you can use superposition when you have Laplace transform models. OK. Here's a silly example, but one that hopefully you will understand. So I've got a system up here. Here it is. 500 dt um, by d time plus temperature equals 0 0.04 ti plus 0.2 q. So ti is a feed temperature in this uh, tank, and q can be cooling, or it could indeed be heating, depending on the system that you've got. Now, what I want to do is separate the response the dependence on the feed temperature and the response dependence on the temperature. So I can analyze them both separately because that can have advantages. So what you can see is this first graph down here looks at the response okay, um, when I change Q. So ignore TI and just look at Q. Whereas this curve here looks at the response when I change TI but don't change Q. Now, the whole point about superposition is that if I want to change ti and q, I can get the total response just by adding these curves together, which is what I've done here. Now, if you're sitting thinking, well, I don't see why it makes much difference, there's a subtlety here. You'll notice the cooling response changed at this particular time instant. So t is approximately 5. 
whereas the feet temperature changed at T is approximately 25. And so I haven't had to bother with trying to come up with a function which has got a step at 5 and a step at 25 and all the corresponding delays and the like. I can just calculate them separately and add the two effects together. And therefore, using superposition makes my analysis and my computation much easier. Now, students doing more advanced courses will get introduced to deviation variables. It's not something that we need to deal with here. Um, but important observation, if you use deviation variables, in fact, you can change a straight line graph to a linear system Essentially what this means is change the axes so that f the straight line goes to the origin, which means you make this, if you've got y equals mx plus c, you're making c equal to zero. Okay. For more complex nonlinearities, a nonlinear system can sometimes, the key word here is sometimes, be approximated locally by a linear system. Um, now, to do that, the inputs and outputs of the linearized system are defined relative to the linearization point um, using Taylor series. And that will be covered in the next video in this series.